San Manani, and welcome everybody to Poetry Africa, to this evening's edition of Unmute Power to the Poet. And this evening we've got a lineup of powerhouse poets indeed for you. It's a women's night and I am so glad to be sharing it with you. I am your host this evening, Noma Kwezi Becker. It's a joy to be with you. So we can expect tonight from South Africa, Ujaro's Jafda. From Kenya, Shelja Patel. From Poland, Veronika Lewandowska. From Japan, Yuri Miki. From South Africa, Hazel Dobo. From Catalan, Maria Josep Escriva. From Chile, Ninfa Maria. And from South Africa, Malika Dobo. Or Mam Malika to me. It's such a pleasure to have each and every one of you here this evening. It's a joy and uh, I look forward to having the experience with you all tonight. So I'm just going to get straight into what everyone has tuned in for this evening, the poets. First up, I'd like to call to our virtual stage, Usisin Tabiseng Jaros Jafta. Jaros is a South African and international performing poet, writer, author, translator, publisher, library book distributor, festival curator, virtual planner, entrepreneur, and creative strategist. Divulga one of my titles, Gumnandimus. Tabi Singh is the deputy president of the National Writers Association of South Africa and founder of the Poetic Blues Virtual Festival. With two Poetic Blues anthologies published, her work has taken her to global spaces such as the International Writing Center at Beijing Normal University, Odense Lyric Festival in Denmark, and to the USA as a guest lecturer and to co-edit a book. Welcome to Poetry Africa, Sister Rose. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon, South Africa, and good day to the world. Childhood memories. That's what I'm unmuting today. First poem. It is in our names. A child bearing gifts as I trot the earth to unknot life mysteries. Every branch in the family tree has a name. I am a native to mother of Janice and a father of gifts. I suckled on a mammoth of inheritance named Leifa father to a builder, Aham. I left the same milk for gratitude, a delighted rainbow child bringing forth words, Lindsay, my son, shine. In union with Bumwe, a sister to change, Petuho. The chapter is now wrapped by revelations of wealth, Tenolo Yalihum, the lineage, post here, we live to follow our names. Mine is Ntavi saying, rejoice with me. Next is my grandmother Siko. My grandmother left, one. She left three daughters, a husband, her sisters, her mother behind. My grandmother left, she picked up disappeared. Was my grandfather that bad? They say he was a man who lived for the streets and its noise. Did she find happiness or baskets of adventure or love? Did she have other children? They say she ended up as a domestic worker in a white home raising someone else's kids. How did she block her soul? Made no attempt to reconnect, left her daughters without a note, my grandfather was silent throughout. How can such silence kill? She came home to pass over, carrying weariness in a bag. Two, erased. Grandmothers are sweet, strict, and gentle. I wouldn't know that warmth. Mine chose not to know us. Her pain shattered her world. We too were erased from her palms. No move made to meet us. 
Does she know us is an ancestor? Three trillion questions. I imagine the purple pin she used to scratch her dandruff, the money knotted in her handkerchief, sweets planted in her breast. Did she also put snuff under her tongue and talk with a blood nose? Was she a classy old lady with properly trimmed suits, rocking head fascinators? Did she imitate her boss when gone? Did she sip exotic teas from their overseas trips or indulge in expensive cocktails from the main house? Did she and her peers dangle their feet in the swimming pool like that in the movies? When she heard on the news about a girl, child missing, a girl brutally raped and murdered, did she yearn to be alone? Did, did her appendix curl or her intestines cramp? How do you miss somebody that you have never met? I miss my grandmother. I caught a drop from the roof and wiped my tears with rainwater. Bahadi, I am calling my father from Rahadi's house. Rahadi's house was not meant for children. The brussel cleaned golden ornaments shiny cobra lavender smelling floors, polished mirrors and polished black shoes. Do not touch her glitter table or diamond spoons. You knock and greet, she gives you money and immediately kisses you goodbye. We, the nieces and nephews, noticed her stoned heart, the freezing cold felt in her kitchen, the strange smell of a mug, living hair feeling creepy. All her departed children, husband and siblings are in her closet. My dad is in there too. A dark locked soul storeroom. Do they come out that night to clean? 25 years later, still not resting in peace. He must be exhausted, lost in the wilderness of ancestry. Rahadi, you need to release my father. His resting place yells his name. What type of a cry will reach your mercy? I wish for your eerie closet to wiggle. All those souls like horses must run to their final homes. It is time you clean your house yourself. I want these souls to slap you hard so you may repent and open those curtains. That dark room deserves the sunlight. Open the closet. Its skeletons have been out already. Tombstones are tilted, plastic flowers dull and dusty. It is over, Rahadi. Let go. Mugiti wamano. Rafaela situtu sesesweu. Rafaela kubonyabu pilo wahao. Rape has a red the Arabesabolo, go put me on Yabahao Bupil. Kalagajeno wena on Swaratili Rumo, Eri Keretulu, he he, on Chabe, on Tadimil. Umpuhe, Sapo, Folo, Ushelitz, Telepilong, it's a Bahopa Hau, Kiboti, Lane, the Chikiche, Le Untuya Puan, Le Hata, Le Pshatle, over the Tohola Hau, Lily Telele, Ubudu, the Sunyamula Lane, Maria Gano, say, say, Le Fats Hoba. Ama uba ifile anasa anela. Le fapanya zanadiye nfelopo ze soto le mikotla eme tutu. Mi ruo le ubeta ntele le tualo. Le utweta tuelo pili ya mwana mwubu chaba nasarantu si eme ti. Ki mashala silifera khauta atae mani le fanagayo nasi sulu. Le retla boka mozo. Ki ma kiku le atisela, ki ma sia le atafuta, ki ba sadi le ba hatikela, ba chale ba pilezi tujan. Hantens le mukito felani, lutuba ni manyambeta a a felani. Chela chala iduba tanga, la fesla sesi to situtu lenga karolo hufifate ngolo eranzo chau fasi. Also le mohi ibila hau boni hore uikutweza luitonga boena. Hajwale nyagalla unwe luhushapa kari khapa sabahe ino. Ntaviseng.
Jaro's Jafta. Thank you, Seabonga. Thank you so much. It's so lovely to see you in performance again. Oh, thank you so much, Sissy, for sharing that window into your experiences and your life. We appreciate it. Next, I would like to welcome Shelja Patel from Kenya. Shelja is the best selling author of Migritude. Recently taught in over, currently taught in over 150 colleges and universities worldwide. Her poems have been translated into 17 languages and featured in the Smithsonian and her performances have received standing ovations on four continents. Honored by the Nobel Women's Initiative with a global feminist spotlight and named one of 50 inspirational African feminists by the African Women's Development Fund, Shelja is currently a research associate at five colleges, Women's Studies Research Center in Massachusetts and at Civitella Ranieri from 2021, uh, she's a 2021 to 2023 fellow. Welcome to the stage, Ms. Shelja Patel. Thank you. This is Triptych. One, syllabus note. O oh, leftist men who heart critiques of Komala and vanish when we say rape culture. O oh, liberal feminists of the global north who ghost us outside your borders. O oh, rainbow imperialists in your pink washing headphones that cancel screams of queers beneath your bombs. You will be examined on the full text unabridged. Two, can't win. Me Katilili Wamenza led a Giriyama uprising in 1913, refused forced labor, hut tax, land theft by the British, reclaimed stolen palm wine and ivory economies. Kenya's Daily Nation called her the mad woman. Dropadi was gambled away by her husband dragged trailing menstrual blood into a court of men while her five royal husbands watched. The Mahabharat calls her the good woman. Three, how this works. First, they said, if it really happened, report it to the police. Don't you know how serious such allegations are? You can't just come to the community without official charges. Then they said, but why did you have to go to the police? Don't you know how trivial such allegations are? You should have come to the community. You said, what community? They said, shut up, bitch, shut up, bitch, shut up, just shut the fuck up. Every day I wake to fresh horrific photos on my social media of trees in Nairobi being chopped down by the authorities and green spaces being grabbed for construction. Some of these trees are hundreds of years old. In recent years, due to the felling of trees and the seizure of green spaces for construction and road building, Nairobi has become a heat island with murderously high air pollution. This poem is called Vehicle Accident Report, Nairobi. Location, Muthurwa Estate, Nairobi. Illegal theater road created by royal decree of his Imperial Majesty Uhuru Kenyatta. Traffic conditions, 600 matatus per day spewing lead-laced fumes. Damage, lung infections, fevers, respiratory problems, asthma, birth defects, lead poisoning. Casualties, Newton Kenyaya, aged seven years, Dixon Minor, five years old, Angelina Mbutika, four, Kennedy Kilindo, three, Mwangi Kimani, Maureen Secheke, two years, Bobby Katane, Ryan Briggs Buire, Susan Busia, one year old, Curtis Mwangi, 11 months, Henry Kihendi, eight months, Lynette Bosiboli, two weeks old. Fatalities, Janet Wanjiko, six months. Cause of death, breathing. 
Yesterday, the International Court of Justice ruled on a border dispute between Kenya and Somalia. The judgment restored Somalia's maritime border, which Kenya had encroached on. This dispute has unleashed a frenzy of belligerent nationalism in Kenya and demands for further military aggression towards Somalia. Kenya invaded Somalia in 2011, and Kenyan troops have been occupying Somalia for the last 10 years. This poem is called Almost. It begins with a statement in 2011 from Major Emmanuel Chirchir, the Kenya military spokesman for Operation Linda Inchi. Linda Inchi means defend the country in Kiswahili. And it was the, the official name given to Kenya's war on Kenya's invasion of Somalia. By Doa, Badere, by Dabo, Dinsur, Afgoye, Bwale, Barawe, Jilib, Kismayo, and Afmado will be under attack continuously. The Kenya Defense Forces urges anyone with relatives and friends in the 10 towns to advise them accordingly. We are doing well on the battlefront. Continue praying for us. I touch walls and sweaters and keyboards as if they bruise easily. I do not want to be touched in these charred and sizzling days when all flesh is frangible. Killing, 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 killing. Repeated enough, it's almost beautiful. If there, they are enemy. The innocent were warned. No old, no infirm, no children, no sick, disabled, starving, pregnant in our war. Al-Shabaab, 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 Al-Shabaab. Repeated enough, it's almost prayerful. Where do you run when borders are closed? Death rains from sky. All parks lead only to conflagration. Crush them, crush them, crush them, crush them. Repeated enough, it's almost edible. Under continuous attack, clear the land, leave nothing that can be claimed, identified, returned to, leave no one alive to tell. Attack, 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 attack. Repeated enough, it's almost sacramental. I give you 10 Kenyan towns. Take Ati River, Machakos, Ungata Rangai, Ngong, Kikuyu, Kiambo. Take Nevasha, Thika, Limuru, Kijabe. They will be under attack continuously. Advise your relatives and friends there accordingly. Linda Inchi, Linda Inchi, Linda Inchi, Linda Inchi. Repeated enough, it's almost potable. The ones still there are enemy. All who die are enemy. We are doing well. We guarantee success. Pray for us. Pray for us, pray for us, pray for us, pray for us. Linda Inchi, Linda Inchi, Linda Inchi, Linda Inchi. Attack, 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 attack. Crush them, crush them, crush them, crush them. Al Shabab, Al Shabab, Al Shabab, Al Shabab. Killing, 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 killing. Repeated enough, it's almost absolution. My final poem is called Blowback, and it was written following the Westgate attack in Nairobi when Al-Shabaab mounted an attack on the Westgate Mall in 2013. A statement by the Al-Shabaab spokesman issued after the attack said, on civilian deaths, Kenya should first be asked why they bombed innocent Somali civilians in refugee camps, why they bombed innocent people in Gedo and Juba regions. If they don't withdraw, attacks like this will become common in Kenya. We will not hashtag our grief. Our grief may not be branded for profit. An eight-year-old is an eight-year-old is an eight-year-old. Wagala is Waziristan, is Westgate. A pregnant woman is a pregnant woman, is a pregnant woman. Garisa is Kismayo, is Nairobi. Blood is blood, is blood, is blood, is blood. The stupid, the venal, the cruel inherit the earth. We withhold our grief 
from the merchants of war. Our grief will not be harnessed to engines of death. Take everything else. This is ours. Our grief is not open for business. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a custodian of truth. Thank you. Our art is such ambassadorship of truth and may we continue having the strength to say the things we need to say to everyone here. Thank you. Next, I would love to welcome to the stage Veronika Lewandowska from Poland. Veronika is a Polish spoken word poet, performer and VR director. She holds a PhD in cultural studies and is a researcher of new media and immersion experiences. Veronika lectures in creative writing and transmedia art at the University SWPS and in design trends at the School of Ideas in Warsaw. Veronika's words have been adapted into VR and screened at the Sundance Film Festival and awarded for the best sound design at Cinequest Film and VR Festival in 2021. Her spoken word verse rises beyond linguistic barriers. Veronica has hypnotized a multilingual audience many a times, performing her melodic and sensual Slavic poetry and performative projects at the most important spoken word poetry events all over the world. She experiments with interdisciplinary and performative forms of poetry, connecting language with synesthetic metaphors, produced by sound and visual actions. Please welcome, help me welcome, Veronika Lewandowska. Hello, hello. Um, I am going to um, unmute uh, the celebration of nature and love, uh, and I'm going to perform two poems in Polish and read one translation of uh, the first poem. Dziś zeszliśmy pod wodę w maskach na bal Szukać zatopionych bar, zatopionych bar W przestrzeni olśnieni W promieniach zagubieni trzy wydechy Pod powierzchnią wody nie ma mnie Lekko nic nie wieje Schodzę tam czasami, gdy nie chcę myśleć, czy zastanawiać się kiedy, gdy czy ty powiesz mi. Ośrodki mowy milczą, ośrodki mowy łowią, a świat jest pod wodą, a świat jest pod wodą. Rybami srebrzysta ławica, rybami srebrzysta ławica, kotwicę wypuszczam z rąk. Teraz tu będzie mój ląd, teraz tu rozpływam się w każdą ze stron czasami. Jesteś palami, czasami jesteś rybami, czasami jesteś, czasami jesteś, czasami jesteś pomiędzy, czasami jesteś, czasami uderzasz gdzieś o dno. Piraci powracają na ląd z łupami, a my do góry, by osiągnąć pion tak mocno osadzony każdy krok. Tak mocno osadzony każdy krok, wyławiam skarby na morze, piasek, piasek i list, a tam kolejne słowa, ryby milczą, my bez ust. Pod powierzchnią wody nie ma mnie, lekko, nic nie wieje, naturalne wygłuszanie, cienie statków, bal, bar, rafa i tratwa, którą powracamy na ląd i powraca z nami grawitacja. Today, we've gone underwater, wearing masks for masquerade to look for the colors that send. In the rays of light, a brain wave, three dimensions of surprise, three breaths. Under the water, I don't exist lightly, no wind. I go there sometimes when I don't want to think or wonder when or will you tell me? The speech centers remain silent. The speech centers just catch and the world is under water. The silvery shows, the silvery shows with my hands, I cast an anchor. This will be my land here 
I melt in all directions. Sometimes you are the wave, sometimes you are the show, sometimes you are in between, sometimes you are, sometimes you are, sometimes you are the waves. You break against the seabed. The pirates go ashore with their loot and we go up, 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 right. Every step is so deep seated. I haul us a show, I pick the treasure from the sea battle, sand, sand, and the letter with yet more words. The silence of the fish. We have no lips to speak with. Under the water, I don't exist lightly. No wind, a nature muffle, the shades of ships the colors of masquerade, the reef of the raft on which we came back ashore and along with us, the gravity. No. Śmieszczę jeszcze, nie mieszczę się w mieście. Duszne, mokre jest powietrze. Uciekam, ściekam po skórze, po wodę, łyk, 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 łyk. Kosmak moich włosów w twoich ustach. Noc, noc. Lot naszych ciał, samolot, spadający meteor, zboża, łoża nas noszą, kołyszą, unoszą, ponoszą i jesteś w moich objęciach, ujęciach bez pojęcia dla tych, którzy nie spróbowali uchwycić wokół dal, oddali, oddali, oddali ich krótką wzroczność. Lekkonośność nas wsysa, lekkonośność nas wsysa i wysyła daleko, daleko i jeszcze świeżcze. Noc, 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 nic nas nie trzyma. Wszystko nas unosi, ponosi, dotyk, kosmyk, moi włos w twoich ustach, czas, ustał na ustach, długi pocałunku, trunku moim, trunku, trunku moim, trunku winnym, tylko słodyczy winnym, słodkim, półwytrawnym, sprawnym gestem mnie łapiesz, gdy potykam się, utracę poso, poso, mnie orzeźwiesz, otrzeźwiesz, jak światło w oknie domu, nikomu, nikomu, nikomu. Ani słowa, nie jestem na to jeszcze gotowa. Przemykamy na górę, chmurę mam w sobie. Opadam na podłogę, opadam na niego, opadam na niego, opadam na niego, opadam, opadam nie opodal dali. Co to zaczęła, poczęła nas, popchnęła mnie do ciebie. Noc, 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 świerszcze jeszcze szeleszczą ciszą. Opuszczam się na jedną noc, opuszczam się na koc, opuszczam siebie samą na jedną podróż wzdłuż i wszerz ciebie. Noc, 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 bliska końca, noc, noc, bliska końca, dzień, dzwoni, dzień, 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 noc, dzień, noc, dzień, noc, dzień, noc, dzień. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, wow. Only a poet can see a word where everyone else goes, this word looks like this. And a poet goes, no, it's a song. No, I'm telling you right now, it's a painting. No, I'm telling you right now, it's a wave. Thank you so much for taking us on that journey. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ah, next, I'd like to welcome Yuri Miki from Japan. Yuri is a Tokyo-based poet who released her first album, Hentai Pervert, in 2013. 
She was an organizer from 2017 to 2018 for the legendary Ueno Poetry Can Jam, Japan's biggest poetry event with around 2,000 poetry fans. She is also a two-time national champion of Poetry Slam Japan and the winner of World Haiku Championship in Paris. Her work in English is, has appeared in Tokyo Poetry Journal and the Sync Review. Yuri is currently the organizer of Kotoba Slam Japan, the new national slam in Japan. Welcome to Poetry Africa, Yuri. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Linda. Uh, I'm mute to be a woman who keeps challenging myself. I'm not very good at English, but I've been trying to read poetry in English for about a year now. The first poem is called Comedy, which I read in English, and then I read another poem in Japanese. Say that I expose to the world the place where my vagina lives. In a garden, tiny flowers bloom and no one does blink or forgive me. Such an off may never have existed, but it reassured us. You are so anchors and I used last month's paycheck to buy you some decorations. When I die, my mysterious death and they do the autopsy, will there be any remorse or pity, I wonder? And will my skull be pure white? When the severing is down and the hexo is placed on its silver stand, will the sound be warm and moist? And the not quite cinematic, but I view of the warm devoid of meaning. Suggesting bullshit. The vibration. It was me. Whenever I touch the sadness of places, what feel best is a kind of masturbation you just my soul do the sum multiple of 10,000 times and after hundreds of midnight or midday spent. After the hundred of midnight or midday spent, taking a meticulous care to avoid touching each other during sex. And there's nothing left of a body. I strap with a spicy woman with you, almost choking. We stand side by side. We know nothing, but we exchange looks that say, we know it all, or we know at least a little bit. My endlessly stretching tongue is so pale. Look how pale it is. I didn't have it, so I wanted it. I never learned how to make appropriate faces. I could have made appropriate faces. I had it, so I didn't want it equally. A torrent of impeccable greetings. I cannot rub just one certain someone. People so cute, they all scared. When they secretly face the horror and scream, their earth spins. There's only one. Nothing to regret and do over. It may be improper, but go ahead and laugh. Afterward, it rained, and everyone cracked their judgy turns. Thank you. Next is fairy tale medhem in Japanese. Sometimes, 
20万円と合うスウェードの靴とどうしようもない言葉が必要だった。昔々、トレーンと機械油の匂いのする小さな町で赤ちゃんを産んだことがある彼女は言った。アイスコーヒーがちゃんと銀色のやつで出てくる国分寺の喫茶店で静かに起こることのできる人間たちが止まらない止まらないタバコの煙の中で夢を見ている。死んでる。みたいに。どうしようもないことばっかりのこの街が好きだ。海は何か途方もないものが流れ出てドラム缶の中で人が死んで急ぐキロには。背中を殴られる。どうしようもないことばっかりのこの街が好きだ。冷たくて甘いものはどの店でも買えるし、私がどの色をどの味を選んだって、誰も見てなくって嬉しくって泣いてる。私たち、遠くへ飛ばされようと高いとこ高いところを目指して登って、大気圏にタッチしていつかそのまま,ま。逆さまに落ちて死ぬだろう。<笑>これは幸福な予言だけど、私にはいつだって正しい言葉が出てこない。喉が張り付く感触ばかり、リアルで切り取られた言葉が、風で散らばっていく。Uma is heavy like you.Uma is heavy like me. あの高い声が好きだった。あの高い声が好きだった。オレンジ色のカバンが宝物だった。古本屋でアルバイトをしていた。あの時髪は長かった。好きな子には優しくできなかった。いつだってイライラしてた。いい匂いの子を集めてた。あの時、本当に髪は長かったのだろうか。さらってけ。風。遠くまで伸ばすのは腕じゃない。巻きつくほど長く、ラプンツェルの髪の毛。あの高い声が好きだった。大好きだった。それだけで生きていけるのに、あるかどうかわからない世界に私たちが飛んでいってしまう。さよなら。最後まであなたがわからなくって。メルヘン。That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Arigato, Yuri. Thank you so much. Oh, that's so lovely. It's such a joy to hear all of these beautiful different languages and to experience them with my ears. I'm sure we all are experiencing them in different ways and bringing different meaning. And then on top of your translations, thank you so much for sharing that with us. We are、thank、glad、you. to have you. Arigato. Next, I would like to welcome Hazel Dobo,、uh, to Dobo uh, from South Africa. Hazel is a self taught author, a performance poet, photographer, graphic designer, and an entrepreneur running her own brand of clothing, Tomo Apparel, and a multimedia company, Inked Pupil Media. Born in Timbisa and raised in the warm city of Bulukwane, she first fell in love with the stage during the days of Wharf and Korong poetry and sound, and then joined Shin Dig Awe, a multicultural, multi generational art hub. Hazel is the proud author of two books one, a self published poetry collection, and thereafter she found a new genre of literature, publishing her second book. Psych Ward Blues in 2016, an autobiographical novella which became her healing process, with the act of writing always being a place of refuge and strength. Thank you for bringing that to us this evening. Welcome, Hazel. Hello,、um, I'm Hazel. As they said, I'm going to start with another loud poem. We are always scared that we might turn up dead tomorrow. And when we don't, another one does instead. We wake up to the weight of the news like it is our own story because it is. Because we are her and she too was like us before she was taken. 
She too lived in a quagmire of the unknown. She too, like us, read of ordinary women, ordinary women who were stabbed, raped and brutally murdered by lovers, strangers, service consultants, friends, colleagues and relatives. We cry, turn into our blankets, shaken by the cold possibilities that lurk and live in the air, picking not one, but many a day to victimize. The heart is always heavy, always weary, but nowadays I just turn numb while the news sit on my tongue like they belong there. I'm starting to believe that they do. They are places that open up and swallow the news every week, every day, a place that spits out fury and grief, which I'd spit into places women are allowed to breathe freely, but I don't do that anymore. We all sit with it. We die a little every time. So when our turn comes, we only have the pain of being brutally had to live through. While hard weighing stories drown in a noise of ego boiling from the mouths of men who sing, not me, not all men, men to every minute while a woman dies at the point of an hour at the hand of a man whose name the earth will learn to swallow before justice comes to light another faceless perpetrator another crime too sensitive to attach gender to another hashtag another social media war zone these are not statistics men have taken men have taken Men have taken, men have been taken. Now we sit and we wait for the world to go poor of women while men remain among each other chanting, not all men, men to suffer in a quagmire of their own selves, remaining to an empty world, a future that'll end when the last man has passed. Alas, we will return to a world that is better of loving fathers who stay, of responsible uncles who don't put 60 year olds on their laps no end, of fathers who don't sell off their teenage daughters to gray headed neighbors for cows, to boys found digging in the pens of infants. We will begin again afresh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Yes, please, can you keep your video on for us? It'd be lovely. Thank you so much. Um, please let me know if my video is still on. You switched it off again. We wish to see you. We wish to unmute your face as well. I witness you. Thank you. Camera is off again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. We want the poetry. Go ahead. Imposter. The first time I woke up a stranger, it was in my primary school years. I remember because the summer was hot and young, I returned to my grandparents. I returned from my grandparents' house without myself felt seen and out of place. For the second time, I had to relearn the company I kept and the jokes we devoured. Time went by and I grew into my tweens. With self-esteem as real as the justice system in our land, with a smile that always remembered to hide and a sense of humor shrunk to whispers, I learned poetry and obsessed over it like it was the only thing I had going. It was. In between poetry was me daydreaming throughout classes and playing alone at home after school. In years to come, I was bigger. I knew myself thoroughly, knew my flaws and how to put them into a poem. My bullies had homes in my poetry, my self-esteem resurrected in my handbook, floating around the classroom, congested with poems with many readers. As soon as my whispers broke into speech, I'd never thought I could speak boldly, let alone speak. Spoken word was a norm. In my high school years, I became the fire that burned inside my heart and blossomed into a dream, a proud black girl with a cricket smile, a loud self-preserved poet with a voice, the voice that carried me through places I never knew existed, spaces with legends and amazing musicians, the awe and inspiration carried me to Joburg, strutting through stages without doubt. 
for a brief moment, distractions visited, my poems packed up and left, I inherited bleeding risks while carrying depression on my bag, too occupied to put my feelings into poems, too occupied to feel losing touch with the world, finding myself at the reception of a psych ward, letting go and letting pills, recalling my writing and how it nurtured me through growing pains, checking out, self-medicating and self-medicating through living the triggers by pain and wine, locked in a small apartment in Germiston, heavy drinking, but quite there in healing. I make it out of depression, packing all my belongings and moving back home. Returning to forgetting to myself, to forgetting myself once again, relearning people's names and where I should know them from, struggling to believe that I really had a voice and touched any lives at all, repeating old poems at shows just because someone asked me to, losing feeling, losing memory, forgetting how to write, how to memorize, how to create anything, feeling out of place for years on any stage, wondering who these people are talking about my poems, feeling lied to, and now again, I find myself an imposter in all my passions in everything I touch, in the dreams that come true on the stages I've prayed for, hoping to pick up the pen again and write my lifeline back into rhythm. Thank you. Um, my last poem, very short and very simple. Um, okay, here we go. The world is beautiful. The world is a wonderful place. How blessed I am to be here. How blessed I am to be on this journey. How blessed I am, I am to have met you all. How blessed I am to know that I am here and I am here with purpose, here on this beautiful world. How blessed I am to see and feel the wonders of this beautiful world. I am grateful. My heart. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely to bear witness to so many stunning souls and your words and your dreams and your, your blessings and the pains. Thank you for sharing all of this with us. I wish to welcome next Ninfa Maria from Chile. Ninfa is a poet and performer from Santiago, Chile. She seeks to transform written poetry into other forms with performance in public spaces and at events related to the arts, as well as experimenting with digital and photogra photographic formats. She has published Liquida in 2017 and contributed to several anthologies in Latin America. Ninfa is a member and co-founder of the artistic collective Pino Coroy, and was also a member of SLAM Chile. Please help me welcome Ninfa Maria. Uh, thank you. I'm so glad to be here and to hear everyone. Um, I think it's important to unmute the pueblo. Pueblo means people in Spanish. Um, I think it's important to unmute the hidden voices or um, to show our needs and sufferings or joys and our ways to see the world um, or desire to empower our own existence. That's um, something we uh, poets can contribute to. Um, I'm going to read a poem in Spanish first and then in English. The poem name is Manguitas. Entre mangas sucias, unas manitos hacen figuras con una lana. Otros deditos toman el hilo, resolviendo la doble X. Pasa el turno al manguitas. Sus dedos torpes no saben qué hacer con la cuerda. Ya, sin salida, se la acapara. 
Corre riendo su fechoría, riendo, siempre riendo, mirando hacia arriba, hacia cualquier cosa que no sea el suelo. Los zapatos son lo de menos. También huye de la noche. Anidado en la plaza con juegos, riendo, siempre riendo. Ya no se acompaña de cualquiera. Como antes, en la noche adulta. O antes de eso, en la noche familiar. Ya no más de esas, las más oscuras. Ahora, en otras noches, enreda sus lanas. En la amistad, que es cualquier cosa menos una flor, no es una rosa como una mamá, fresca de día, marchita de noche, víctima de los zapatos, llena de espinas. Se olvida de ellas en la amistad, que es cualquier cosa menos una botella, esa que se lleva a los padres a viajar por el océano con olas que nunca los devuelven. En la amistad se acogina, ignorando la cuneta fría, compartiendo risas, a veces con una bolsa. La respiración se hace liviana. Ojalá el suelo se acabe para siempre, dice el Manguitas, y nunca más tengamos que usar zapatos. Now I will read it in English. Um, the name of the poem is Manguitas. Manguitas, that mean uh, slips, like the slips of the clothes. Okay. Between dirty slips, some little hands makes figures with a wool. Other fingers take the thread, solving the double X, pass the turn to Manguitas. His clumsy fingers don't know what to do with the rope. Trapped, he takes it for himself, runs laughing his mischief, laughing, always laughing, looking up towards anything that isn't the ground. The shoes are the least important thing. Also, he flees off the night. He nests in the square with games, always laughing no longer stays with anyone as before in the adult night or before that on family nights no more of those the darkest now on other nights he tangles his wool in friendship which is anything but a flower it is not a rose like a mom fresh by day withered by night victim of the shoes full of thorns, forgets about them in friendship, which is anything but a bottle, bottle, the one that takes parents to travel across the ocean with waves that never return them. In friendship, he cuddles, ignoring the cold gutter, sharing loves, sometimes with a bag, breathing becomes lighter. I hope the ground ends forever, Manguitas says, and we never have to wear shoes again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that beautiful recital. Uh, it's Yeah, in other words, it's such a gentle evening today. There's so much, so much care for language and for word and for feeling. And thank you so much for delivering that. Um, lovely to meet you. Uh, next, I'm going to introduce Umam Malika Ndlovu from South Africa. Umam Malika's words feature on pages and stages across South Africa and globally contributing specifically to South African arts, culture, and poetry for over 25 years, and having published two plays, five poetry collections, and curated numerous events, this transdisciplinary artist thrives on collaboration. Consistently promoting healing through creativity, she is also a member of the Arts in Psychosocial Support National Network of Practitioners. She features prominently in Our Words, Our Worlds, writing on Black South African women poets. 
from 2000 to 2018, edited by Umamma Kosazana Aba. Mamalika's next book, Grief Seed, will be published in early 2022. And it's lovely to see you once again in the same day, Mamalika. Welcome to the virtual stage. Thank you. It's so hard to bring an instrument into a small screen, but let's try. <laughs> Let it mess with your sleep, make you forget to call or eat, want to curl up, hide from the light, your mind chattering a scratched record through the night. Let it. Letting is never easy, but somehow part of the getting better, getting over, coming through, even when you cannot see something vital is being retrieved. Let the wound weep for its own coming into being, for all the time it took for you to truly look at it, naked and raw, swollen and sore, inflamed like never before or once more. Let the wound weep, rage, sob and howl, hear its call in solitude or in crowds. Listen for when and how to answer, to play, stay shallow, or dive, sink deep. Stay here, grounded by its presence. Let the wound weep, breathe, breathe, go slowly. Healing is adorning, can feel like losing, seems like burning, drowning, or even a dying. But only the wound knows how many days, how many times, or ways. Breaking news. On the seventh day, yesterday, she threw herself in front of a train, her one-year-old daughter, six-day-old son, crossing into oblivion with her. Unnamed mother from Yesterfir stops the six to six commuters dead in their tracks disrupts their usual sleepwalking Tuesday morning to howl without a sound that she could find no other way out or through. The newscaster delivers this sound bite via my car radio on a summery afternoon, like a poisoned arrow direct to the chest until I bear witness in words I find no rest. Suddenly chilled, a brief involuntary gasping for air as I hear the final blow. No one, no one has yet reported her missing or come to claim three once pulsing bodies now silent and maimed. Perhaps only now, only now is she free to stop running from the wolves consuming her from the inside. Invisible terrors of sorrow, guilt, 
shame, fear, or despair, the paralyzing loss of all reason, heart anchors to keep her hopeful or here. Black River followed me home between breath, thoughts, sleep, deep cut image of a brother, a silent brother hanging from a tree. Three children in my back seat, so I sob quietly and drive by, drive by, drive by, bye, 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 bye. Newspaper tells Black River stories, two bodies, one week in August alone, one floating unknown, the other with a detailed note in his backpack telling them to send his body, whom to send his body home to, back home somewhere in Zimbabwe, somewhere. Take him, take him home. Take him home, take him home, take him home, take him home. Black rivers all over this country, all over the world, I'm sure, weeping and wailing just like me in ways seldom heard, hard to see unless you're listening to what it really means, listening to him, to her, listening to me. Black River sings, sings bringing me sweet blood offerings till I can't breathe. Like a child, almost 50, yet still can't believe, can't believe, can't be, can't, can't be, can't, can't believe, can't be, can't be. Converging sorrows. One, porous skin grows thin. Old sorrows sidle their way in. Memory, an inextricable magnetic field. She sinks deeper into grief's seabed, swims in murky tide of the head, washes up on tiny island just for one, unable to anchor to find the middle ground. Two. The outer expression, the inner dance, the waves, weighted thought projections, emotional retractions pierced only by this anchor of presence. All dissipates to breath and heartbeat till there is only here and now. Three. Under sacred cover of night, all is as it should be. Shadows and sorrows laid to rest till their next resurrection. Gratitude fills in from all sides, filters in appreciation of the lessons born of each tide, the unfailing compass of love, even in these moments of drowning. Oh, Thank you, Mama. And here we are unraveling at the seams and trying to pick our pieces back up and put them together again in this space. Um, and that's what poetry does. That's exactly what it does. Thank you. <sighs> Lastly, 
I'd like to welcome Maria Josep Escriva from Catalonia. Maria is the author of six books of poetry, the last three of which have been significant in her career for several reasons. Her works have won several awards, such as the Jocks Florals de Barcelona Prize and the title of the Poet of the City, the Valencian Writers Critics Award and the Catalan Poetry Critics Prize. Maria is the author of narrative books for readers of all ages, and her poems have been included in several anthologies in Italian, French, and English. In the latter, you can read a sample of her poetry in women writers in Catalan. She has published numerous articles of literacy, literary criticism in various media and directs a collection of poetry, the Valencian publishing house where she works. Please welcome to our virtual stage, Maria Josep Escriva. Aquesta és una declaració de principis poètics que vaig escriure i publicar ja fa quasi 20 anys en un llibre que es titula Tots els noms de la pena. Poema a la intempèrie. Fer un poema com viure un amor clandestí. De vegades ruïnes, de vegades espina i al final poema ranci d'impossibles. Un poema com un petit problema domèstic o queixa visceral que en dir-la fora d'ara muntanyes. Com una soledat només meua que mai enyore. Com qui soc, com qui mai voldria ser. Un poema urgent com un viatge que només l'avidesa d'unes mans assumiria. Fer un poema com desplegar una àmplia acció de gràcies, com respirar una alegria primària. Un poema com un adeu inajornable, un poema com un desig de pluja. Fer un poema despert com l'herba verda, un poema tan fals com el no res. Un poema podrit com un remordiment en el ventre de culpa original. Un poema més mort que la nostàlgia. Poema en va i poema nostre com una taula compartida. Poema pena, poema arrel, poema a la intempèrie. Poema viu i indispensable com un arbre. Fer un poema, doncs, com un amant es busca en cada vés, igual que el sol que obre la terra i la terra, encara tèbia, des del seu silenci primitiu, aviat l'oblida. Un poema on jo vull incidir en la consciència de la nostra insignificança humana. Però és una insignificança que té alguna cosa d'excepcional perquè és tot el que tenim. I aleshores aquesta consciència és també la nostra grandesa com a humans. Es titula La llum és l'excepció. La llum és una treva, una excepció. Un escull com una víscera lluent surant en un mar negre. Negre d'absolut, on tot tornarà a ser quan un dia s'acabarà la treva de l'aire. L'infant que riu és una treva. I mirar-lo, i riure en el seu temps petit, treva en el no ser que se'ns imposa. La calma d'una nit és una treva, una excepció. L'excepció de qui se sap, en silenci, mentre cau la rosada, en silenci, i en silenci escriu. La paraula és una treva, una treva de llum, de nit a nit, definitiva. 
A la guerra de la antigua Yugoslavia, yo consultaba noticias eh, en periódicos. Va a haber un día en que Bach veure en una página de un periódico una fotografía de un militar que miraba a un sonriure la cámara. Y la situación era muy dura porque estaba envoltat de personas muertas. A mí aquella imagen em va a semblar una obscenidad. Y eso hem de sumar, puede ser una, una escena cotidiana, que es que yo voy a utilizar aquella página de periódico para depilarme. Tot plegat em va a hacer escribir aquel poema que se titula L'Obsé. Hay una citación introductoria de Paul Eluard que dice Le regard fixe dans une solitude d'encre. Unes llàgrimes de cera roent cauen damunt dels fulls del periòdic que estés a terra, just on un soldat custodia, quiet com un molló, un grapat de cadàvers. I l'espàtula es paralitza en l'aire, no pels morts, obscurs i vells, ni pel posat de plom que el durmester de guerra solicita, sino per la delectança, allà a sota dels meus genolls, amb que el milicià mira la càmera, l'obscenitat amb que ignora la mort dels altres homes. Amb un rampell de fúria l'agafa en un manyó que el diari i l'enfonsa en el vaixell escaldat de la cera, y així, per un atzar desventurat, l'acte quotidià de depilar-me es converteix en ofensiva bèl·lica de conseqüències imprevisibles. Aquest és un poema escrit a manera de epitafi. Es titula La casa sota la lluna. L'únic consol, la casa que m'habita, lliure, a el meu enyor, sota la lluna. Del últim llibre publicat, fins ara, sempre és tard, recitaré un poema que es diu Obstacles, que està escrit per celebrar el 80è aniversari d'un poeta valencià que es diu Jaume Pérez Montaner, gran poeta i, i bon amic. És un poema on jo faig un repàs per tots aquells motius, excuses que ens posem en la vida per no fer el que realment ens importa i el que voldríem fer. Un vers introductori de Jaume Pérez Montaner que diu «Fou la vida un combat sense victòria». Obstacles. Busque el silenci i el món escridassa i enmig de la remor anhele ser en la nuesa del poema on dolen els versos que tampoc avui escriuré. Nie en la balma asolada d'uns braços i tanmateix com l'ocell condemnat a volar cada matí els desocupe. Somie que era el bosc quan a l'asfalt pudent m'he desvetllat. És en els mots que el meu món se mordena, però el dia a dia sempre a l'aguait se'ls empassa com si fossin els mots un grapat de confits. Sempre el desig, l'alicient primer, l'única llibertat en el camí del lloc, encara que queixale el temps la carn cansada i punxen a la pell agulles de tristor. Les coses són com són, o diu la dita, i desmentir-la el gran motiu que empeny, viure contra pronòstic. Així, en la cursa imparable del temps, només jo sóc obstacle decisiu, amb permís de la pedra rotunda del sepulcre. Jo sóc un poble de vora mar, el Grau de Gandia de, del País Valencià. Per tant, la mar és una presència és omnipresent en la meva vida. I aquest és un poema precisament on no idealitza la mar, tot el contrari, perquè parla, dedica el poema a les persones que moren ofegades 
en la mar mediterránea buscando una vida mejor. Es titula Els polps. A una situación introductoria que diu quedaba poco. Estábamos muy cerca. No queda nada. Fran García. Grup d'individus que habiten sobre fons marins, colgats en el substrat o desplaçant-se per la superfície. Espècie bentònica, se'n diu. Amb dos ulls grossos que els proporcionen molt bona visió, canviaran d'aspecte i de textura, tot depenent de què els depare la sort. Per què parle de polps si vull parlar de nàufrags? Homes i dones que suren a la mar com boies de colors. En un any, 2.600 boies, els mateixos veïns que té el meu poble. No hi arriba que els aproxime, ombres, pregones que somien una altra terra promesa i maleixen llurs sorts perquè precisament avui bufa llevant. Tenen un tacte excel·lent i sentit del gust per tastar allò que toquen. Són carnívors, els polps, s'alimenten de peixos, de crustacis, de moluscos i de cossos d'ofegats. Dues mil sis-centes boies, si és que tenen sort de surar. La majoria desapareix per sempre, espectres entaforats en cadús. Amb ells es fon la terra putrefacta que no els espera. Quedava poc i ja no en queda res. Soledat glacial, salobre sepultura, plàncton d'indiferència. No parle ara de nàufrags, sinó de depredadors que devoren polps de tres cors, que devoren cossos d'ofegats i bomben sang blava rica en coure. Trista espècie humana, se'n diu. Quedava poc. Érem ben a la vora i ens havien donat la paraula. Anirem, us anirem a pescar abans que tot siga carronya al fons del mar. Dos poemes d'un llibre que es titula Serena Barca, d'un apartat dit Lentes estalactites, on jo intente parlar del dolor del món, d'un dolor que pot ser global i també és individual. I per mi és la mateixa cosa, el dolor dels altres, el meu dolor. El primer poema es titula Lentes estalactites. Ens modela el dolor, lentes estalactites que creixen a mesura que es desagnen contra l'abisme on precipita la gota inesgotable que sense preguntar ens perpetua. I aquest es titula síndrome premenstrual, un problema que patim les dones de vegades. Devastades, com si un mar infinit o una terra erma, la meua pena i jo, jo amb la meua pena, som. Paràsit de paràsit, indivises, afirmatives, insuportables, menstruals i recíproques. La meua pena em fa, jo faig la meua pena i ens fem les dues, subjugada companyia. Un poema dedicat al meu pare, que fa uns anys va tenir un problema de salut, que a mi em va fer veure per primera vegada que aleshores era el pare que necessitava les atencions dels fills, de la filla en aquest cas, i no al revés. Es titula Els anys serens. S'asseu damunt d'un tronc de taronger, 
a reposar el pes del compromís amb els seus dies. Tragina la sort d'alenar l'aire, el cansament que encara la vida li reserva. Però enllà de la finestra, aquell esforç se'm cou al pit, com si la seua cicatriu hagués obert un cràter al cor meu. Com si aturar-se fos abandonar, s'encara cautelós al munt de llenya i en fa petits fragments d'antigues gestes. Endreça cada soca per al foc i amb dits d'escorça tendra s'inicia en el camí dels anys serens, mon pare. En el silenci de la seva treva brolla de sobte un cant d'ocell, esclata abril com una rosa i ell l'escolta amb un calfred de por i de grandesa, per primera vegada lluny de l'home que fou, abans d'un primer rossinyol ressuscitat. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. I kept saying, I hope I hold the room with care. I hope I hold the room. You held me. <laughs> you held each other with such gentleness, such kindness, such truth. And when it was needed, such blatant honesty. So thank you, each of you, for, for unraveling and then piecing us back together again. I appreciate you. Thank you, each and every one of you who tuned in this evening. I hope you felt what I felt. <laughs> and if there was a live audience here, you'd be hearing those clicks and those claps. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.